Hello everyone, and welcome to October PDF Fest. The following webinar is entitled Automating Document Anonymization and Pseudonymization in a Browser. I'd now like to introduce our speaker for this session, Andrei Selenov. Oh, hi, thanks so much. All right, so welcome everyone. Thanks so much for PDF Association for hosting this event. And uh, yeah, so let me introduce myself a little bit. I'm Andre, I'm a solutions engineer at PDFtron. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about uh, how we can automate document anonymization and pseudonymization. Now, the last word is quite tricky. I had a couple tries to try it, uh, to say it correctly as well. Okay, so let's jump in. So I want us to kind of get all on the same page. Uh, what is redaction? So redaction is the process of censoring, deleting, or obscuring confidential text and images inside of the document. So why do we need redaction? Well, here's some of the redaction use cases. I think the most popular use case is reduction of personally identifiable information. And personally identifiable information is in any information that can uniquely identify a person. This uh, reduction is also used for removal of proprietary data from document sharing during financial transactions or uh, legal contract review. Um, in financial transaction words, specifically around merger and acquisition, uh, you really don't want to give someone uh, prior to kind of merging the two companies together any kind of apprehended knowledge that can kind of drive the necessary conditions uh, during the negotiation process up or down. And then reduction of protected health information. Uh, so when kind of releasing the medical health records or clinical trial data, we only want to ensure that only the must know uh, information kind of gets out instead of releasing any uh, patient info that's not specifically related uh, to the clinical trial that's ongoing. Uh, and then when hiring that perfect candidate uh, to remove any bias from the applications or resumes. Uh, and then when creating data sets for ML training, um, we want to ensure that, again, uh, there's no personally identifiable data uh, inside of it. And a lot of um, kind of businesses that do not actually understand GDPR, California Privacy Act, or LGPD, uh, coming at the new one from Brazil. Um, and to stay compliant with it, there's few kind of rules and guidelines that they must follow. And a lot of kind of North American businesses don't realize that even though they are kind of out of uh, European uh, jurisdiction, uh, because they're handling European data, uh, Europeans use their data, they need to stay compliant with the GDPR. And to do that, to kind of store the data long term, uh, they should go ahead and redact any personally identifiable information inside of the documents that they're planning to retain for longer periods of time. So uh, here what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at different approaches uh, to the reduction and how it's done, how it's been done historically, and what are kind of the better ways to do it today. Okay, so historically, we're all kind of familiar with printing out the document and physically marking that with a Sharpie or a black highlighter and then scanning the document back then. Even, even before that, the reduction was actually quite a manual process by uh, manually cutting out that piece of information that needed to be removed from the document. Now, there are certain drawbacks uh, to this approach. First, it creates multiple versions of the document when we're kind of uh, scanning it back in. A uh, user has to either download or print the document, which in case of the printing of the document, is not very environmentally friendly. Uh, the quality of the scanned images is actually affected as well, uh, depending on the printer kind of settings. Uh, and then when placing the images back in, it's crooked, misaligned, and doesn't look too, too good. And sometimes the reducted content can still be seen by changing the contrast value and playing around with the image, uh, especially if it was done with a black highlighter, highlighter or a Sharpie. Okay, so then, you know, to kind of improve that process, uh, the next step is image-based reduction. So image-based reduction involves converting PDF to an image, uh, rasterizing the PDF, and then blanking out those specific pixels of any sensitive information that needs to be removed. Now, there is drawback to this approach as well. Even though it's way more secure than kind of the previous approach, 
uh, the document is no longer searchable. So when we turn it into kind of go from PDF to an image, uh, we'll lose that searchability. And <clears throat> a lot of the times the size might actually increase uh, since a PDF kind of contains instructions how to uh, rasterize the content and present it from the vector-based information. Uh, when kind of just keeping it as an image, it just contains the high-res imagery. Uh, and as such, uh, especially if there is a lot of complex content, it might blow up the size of the PDF or the kind of resulting image from the conversion. And even though the size uh, of the image is increasing, the quality is actually lost at the larger zoom. So especially when we're dealing with kind of very um, complex uh, with a lot of kind of elements inside of it, if we need to kind of zoom in and go in far, um, that, that might actually be lost when um, converting into an image. However, it is a bit more secure. And uh, this one uh, is probably the best approach uh, to redaction is kind of following the PDF specification set out, uh, we can use the uh, reduction annotations to kind of signify or place areas that need to be marked up for the reduction. Now we can get the bounding box of the reduction annotation uh, and using the quads information or the coordinates, find out any elements that either are underneath or intersect uh, together with that bounding box. And then we can ensure that we remove text, images, path, and other elements that are underneath it to make sure that even if some information is not visible, we still go ahead and remove it. And this way we can maintain the original format, uh, we can stay in PDF, and we can maintain searchability and original metadata of the document. And this, we, yeah, perfect. Okay, so what are some common uh, reduction workflows? So perhaps the most uh, popular workflow that we can think of is that the user kind of manually brings up the document and they have to scan it with their eyes to see and find any of the content that needs to be removed. Now, we're all humans and we make errors. Uh, the user might actually miss the key content to be redacted. Um, and the process is very time consuming. So if we're dealing with kind of a contract that's 50 pages long, uh, and we have to deal with 10 of them, uh, it really adds up. And then, you know, with uh, each document, the quality it is lost. So the user is getting tired and, you know, it's just, it just becomes a mess. Now to kind of improve that process and help the user up, uh, the user can start performing the search for specific keywords or pattern matching to find the content to be redacted. Now, depending on the engine, search engine used to kind of search through the PDF uh, or the text algorithm uh, that kind of powers that search capability, it might not actually yield uh, the correct result. And what I mean by that, we know that inside of a PDF, the way uh, kind of words appear on the screen, the way this kind of presentation slide would appear is not always the order it's actually stored in. So if the kind of text extraction algorithm is using the logic-based uh, order extraction, uh, the results we might get from that text, it might be kind of gibberish or out of order, and then kind of searching for it uh, might not actually kind of give us the correct uh, terms and values. And sometimes some of the words that we search for might be just kind of skipped over because they've been broken out into several characters. And as well as, especially in kind of a multi-language, uh, uh, if, if the person is speaking um, multiple languages, uh, the keyword could actually change from user to user. So for example, the way I would search for something on a document might actually be different from my colleagues. So then uh, we might not actually find the exact results of the content that needs to be redacted. And Google search uh, is the, does a great job of it. Uh, so they can aggregate the searches we're done and then the content that's been selected. However, on a PDF, we don't have kind of Google search based engine. Uh, so we can really aggregate the search results to provide uh, the right data. And then to kind of demonstrate what I'm speaking about um, for the search results, you can actually take a look at the PDFGS uh, search. And there is one specific document that uh, PDFGS has a hard time uh, kind of exploring. So this slide will be available after presentation, so you can kind of visit this link at your leisure. Okay, um, so if there's no formal workflow is available, if uh, the user is kind of left out there, uh, the users will get creative and they will try to figure out a new approach. 
So, you know, there, there's drawbacks, like you can't really control what the user is going to do. And it could, you know, end up that the user downloads the local copy of the document to their computer and somebody might actually get a hold of their workstation. Uh, for example, we're all working from home at the moment. Um, and same thing, you can't really enforce a retention policy on the user downloads folder or any of the folders that they're saving the file. Uh, so potentially the file might just be sitting there and it's no longer compliant with the GPR. Um, they might go out and try to use any third party tools, uh, whether they're web based or they're desktop based. But, you know, if you right now kind of go and search for uh, redacted PDF online, there's going to be tons of different tools available. However, not all of us kind of take the time to read the terms and conditions and realize uh, how our data is going to be used, whether or not it's going to be sold for any other purposes. So when we're uploading the sensitive data uh, to servers across multiple countries, it can actually lead to high risk of data loss or leaks. And for example, uh, Canadian government, uh, any Canadian citizen's data actually needs to be staying within uh, Canada's jurisdiction. Uh, so anytime a Canadian government employee kind of goes in, downloads the document and uses any online server that maybe is uh, hosted in the US, uh, they're potentially breaching the privacy on the Canadian citizen and therefore no longer compliant. Um, and again, if there's no formal workflow, if there's no kind of uh, a process in place, it just leads to unnecessary time loss. Downloading the document, uploading the document to different tools, kind of emailing around really kind of creates a mess and uh, time loss. It is also a nightmare uh, to get someone to kind of coordinate and get everybody on the same page. It creates a barrier to enhancement if you know every person in an organization or the group has their own unique process at the way they do things or track things um, kind of during this process. Okay, uh, so what are some reduction failures? Uh, and we don't have to go far, for example, they happen quite often. Uh, so for example, whereas for the former Trump campaign, uh, Chair Paul Manafort failed to properly redact pleadings they filed in the Federal Court of 2019. The copy-paste actually revealed incriminating, simply by copy-pasting, it revealed incriminating information underneath because the content was only obscured with a black highlight annotation, but the text was still underneath. So they just placed a black highlight, they didn't burn it in, uh, just left it there, and they didn't convert it to an image. Um, and then another one, more most recent one, the PDF document released by uh, the U.S. government as part of Jeffrey Epstein investigation were also reported to be properly redacted, enabling public access uh, to sensitive content underneath. Now it makes uh, kind of great deal for uh, news outlets because uh, they can get uh, juicy facts and information directly from the source. Uh, however, it's not good for privacy of uh, the users. So, you know, we talked about how, uh, what is redaction? What are different kind of redaction flows uh, and then redaction failures? But now let's talk about solutions. Let's talk about how we can improve the reduction flow. Okay, so we want to ensure that we use true reduction uh, that are complying with the PDF specification. We want to ensure that when performing reduction, we remove all the underlying elements. And we need to not just kind of remove anything that we see, but also anything we do not see. So for example, there could be some personally identifiable uh, information inside of metadata or actually files attached inside of a PDF. You can have a PDF attached uh, with another PDF attached with another PDF. So it's kind of like a PDF inception. So the trick to that, you can just remove any attachments that the document has to ensure that there's not going to be any sensitive information inside of the attachments on a PDF. Or you can just kind of recursively go through each one and just ensure that uh, you remove it. Now, sometimes uh, there could be sensitive information outside of the visible region. So to kind of combat that, we can adjust the crop box of a PDF page to ensure there's no content uh, that is not visible to the user. So just kind of blow it up, see if there's any elements or you can actually perform the search on the document um, through and kind of check if anything falls outside of that specified crop box. And if it does, just remove it, okay? And we really wanna kind of help uh, users uh, to 
you know, spend more time on where their time is valuable and kind of any automation tasks, we can kind of outsource to an automated process uh, to increase accuracy and the speed of the review. So I'm going to talk about some of those. And when it comes to kind of verifying whether or not reduction took place, uh, here's a best way to kind of test it out. First, I would try to kind of select any of the text in the redacted areas to make sure there was nothing kind of missed and I cannot copy paste anything, uh, any underlying content. Um, I can try to remove the reduction annotations. So what I would do is grab the document from the viewer where the annotations are coming from and then open it up in a different viewer and maybe give myself elevated permissions like an administrator to play around with annotations and then try to remove them. And then using a low level PDF inspection tools to confirm uh, that the redacted elements have been completely removed. Okay. And really, really want to stress this one. We want to avoid user download. We need to provide users with a workflow that, you know, doesn't push them to download the document and create multiple conflicting versions. So let's say we have multiple people working on a 50 page contract, 1000 page contract. Uh, we really want to make sure that, you know, we're out kind of working from the same single source of truth. Uh, we are not creating multiple versions uh, that are kind of getting emailed around. And as we know that email is not very secure, so we want to kind of keep the user within our application or um, yeah, within, within our application and ensure that nothing gets leaked out and they can move the document through uh, stages. So for example, in case of multiple people working on the same document, uh, we can actually kind of enable them to go through multiple stages. So the first stage might be, uh, you know, the redaction annotations are actually placed ahead of the time. Uh, they're kind of created programmatically by searching for specific key terms, patterns, uh, in any board bank that we have, and then kind of place them. And the first kind of user comes in and says, okay, cool, I'm going to review it. Okay, this redaction annotation is good. Oh, it missed this content right here. And it can move to the next stage uh, to their supervisor and kind of speed that process up. And then this way, you also have full control over document lifecycle and transition over your network you know exactly what service is going to hit in what countries. And this way you can ensure that you stay compliant with any um, jurisdiction restrictions uh, your users might have. So here's some of the kind of advantages of client-side reduction. Client-side meaning uh, we do everything kind of on the front end. So if we're talking about a applica web application, um, kind of the reduction would actually take place inside of a user's browser. So we can really minimize the security risk of document kind of traveling around. And then we have less server infrastructure to kind of create or upkeep. So it kind of results to be a little bit more cost efficient. So what I mean by that is that with the client side approach, what we can do is uh, we can have a file storage that we pull the document out of and then open it up in the user's web application in front of them. Uh, the user can mark up any of the areas that need to be redacted and after they're satisfied, they can actually apply and burn in all the reductions directly inside of their web app. And this way, you can save off a new copy of the document, or you can use that uh, document right away in the next step or flow. So for example, you can release it for public access or email it out to the legal counsel of the opposing party. It is also easier to deploy and scale um, so instead of kind of having to have a file storage, a web application, a server that hosts the front end web application, the server that will be performing the redactions and the text extraction, um, you can just kind of move everything to the front end. And this way, the more as your application grows and more and more people are signing up uh, for your application and using it, you don't have to worry about the infrastructure that you're maintaining and kind of scaling the servers. Okay, so anonymization versus pseudo anonymization. Uh, that's a hard one. Uh, so at the start of the slide, I have those two terms up, uh, but so far we've been kind of talking about reduction. So let me kind of go through it and ensure that we understand the differences between the two. And then uh, towards the end of it, we're going to have a white call. Okay, so anonymization. So anonymization ensures that the person or data cannot be identified. 
uh, both California Privacy Act and GDPR, they actually allow sale of anonymized data. So any of the data that you collect on the users, as long as you properly redact it and remove any personally identifiable information, you can sell that data anywhere. Okay, so here's how like an anonymized document could look like. So for example, here we have certain redacted areas. However, you know, at a first glance, uh, the document's kind of hard to read. And especially if the document is even more redacted, then it becomes a nightmare. We're losing kind of key uh, points for us to connect the dots on what's happening inside of the document. So we could lose a lot of contextual information necessary. Now, um, a lot of redactors out there, they can actually add the labels on top of excised areas to identify what type of information was removed. And this process is called pseudonymization, the identification process. Now, for example, if we have a date of birth that we're dealing with, we can actually replace it with a range. So instead of kind of giving the exact, we can say 25 to 40 years of age. Addresses can be replaced with a more generic geographical location, and the amounts can be replaced with an approximate range. So let's take a look at how a pseudonymized, pseudonymized document could look like. Okay, so here the document didn't lose any context, but any identifying data uh, have been removed. So for example, we know that we're talking about a vendor and a bank, and the whole thing is happening in Vancouver, BC, Canada, so we know what jurisdiction it falls under. We also know that the amount is talking about uh, USD documents, and we know the currency. So how we can improve this process and kind of make it better? Well, using the tag structure of a PDF, we can know what type of content that we're dealing with, and using mail training that kind of receives uh, a lot of the redacted data to be replaced with something else, we can actually train it up to ensure that it provides this meaningful context, but without um, uh, providing any identifying information. So for example, um, a few approaches are here, how to kind of improve that process and how I think this process will be improved in the future. Now, the really cool one, uh, Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3 from OpenAI, can actually recognize human-like text from the search term provided to perform accurate reduction. So if you remember, uh, a couple slides ago, I was kind of talking about that the way you and I would search for exact same piece of information might actually be different. Um, so in their online demo uh, for GPT-3, uh, they actually had a Wikipedia article about bread and the user was Googling uh, or searching on the document to say, okay, uh, what makes the bread squishy? And even though there was not a single mention of squishy, it took uh, the user down to the right place where it was talking about what makes the dough fluffy and kind of what ingredients kind of go in. So yeast to kind of right, make it rise up and make it fluffy. Um, so this way it was pretty cool to see and one of the applications I thought for GPT-3 is to take it and build um, kind of to help the users, doesn't matter the way they search, but try to see if we can approximate uh, any of the data relevant to their search term to perform accurate reduction. Okay, now time for a live poll. Okay, perfect. And I believe it's going to be launched. Uh, but the question here really is, question for you, how many credit card transaction data points does it take to uniquely identify a person? And it provided you several options available. Okay, perfect. Let's take a look at the results. Ah, and most of you got it right. It is correct and it is four. Perfect. So yeah, 90% uh, of people can actually be identified from four samples out of 30 days of credit card transaction data from 1.1 million people. That's pretty crazy. And if you think about the transaction data, all it is, it provides kind of the amounts and addresses of the locations that uh, something was purchased at. So it's pretty crazy. So that's all I have prepared uh, for you today. Thank you so much. Uh, now it's time for a Q&A. Thank you, Andre. Okay, so we'll, we're now going to begin taking questions for Andre um, that you, uh, based upon his presentation, and you can still submit questions right now through the questions pane in your attendee control panel.
Okay, perfect. So uh, while you guys typing in uh, your questions, uh, one of the most kind of frequent questions that I have, especially when talking about when client side, server side, they say, you know, like, what's the most popular, uh, what's the best way to kind of optimize my infrastructure uh, to allow for most efficient kind of reduction flow? And I would say that uh, first, you know, we have the file storage where the documents are going to be residing. And then uh, second is the next piece is going to be a server piece that can extract the text out of a PDF and perform analysis on it. So you can use and plug it in with a you know, machine learning algorithm for text analysis to see if there is any personally identifiable information in there or anything specific from our word bank that we could be possibly looking for. And then create those placeholder redaction annotations on top of the document and send that document uh, to the user's front end. Then the user can kind of go through multiple stages with multiple users or just them alone uh, to kind of identify and say, hey, that's a good redaction, great job. Uh, no, that's not personally identifiable information. We can just remove this. Uh, this should be added and this how we should kind of tag it or classify as. Uh, so this way we can kind of improve our process in the future as well. And then after it's done, we can apply the redactions and move the document to the next stage, whether it's emailing it out or releasing it to the public. Well, thank you, Andre. Uh, thank you very much to everybody for attending today's webinar.